Hi guys, here's your lesson on the unit circle. The unit circle is a circle that has a radius of one unit, which is, which is why it's called a unit circle. Um, what we can use the unit circle for is to be able to find exact values of trig functions. If you recall from geometry, we have special right triangles 45, 45, and 90. We have our 30, 60, 90 over here, and this triangle is just uh, your 30, 60, 90 triangle rotated. Um, these were special triangles in geometry, and these special triangles allow us to create our ordered pairs around the unit circle. Um, but before we start talking about the ordered pairs, let's go ahead and start filling in your angle measurements. So the unit circle has angle measurements in degrees and in radians. So I'm going to go ahead and do the degrees first. This right here is zero degrees. Um, this is 90 degrees because it's your quadrantal angle, 180. So each quadrant is an increment of 90 degrees, 270. And finally, a floor rotation is 360 degrees. If I were to take my 90 degrees and cut it in half, that would give me this angle measurement, which is 45 degrees. So each angle measurement in the middle of your quadrant is an increment of 45 degrees. So I have 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, and then finally 360. Um, your other angle measurements are increments of 30. So I have 30 degrees, 60 degrees, uh, 90, 120 degrees, 150 degrees, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, and then finally 360. The next thing we want to do is fill in all of the angle measurements in radians, which I'm going to go ahead and do in a different color so I can color coordinate. So 0 degrees is the same thing as 0 radians. Um, 180 degrees is the same thing as pi, and then a full rotation is the same thing as 2 pi. Now if I were to cut pi in half, just like you can cut 180 in half to get 90, um, if you cut pi in half, that's going to give you pi over 2. So 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2. So every 90 degrees is an increment of pi over 2. So I have 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, which reduces, 3 pi over 2, and then finally 4 pi over 2, which reduces to 2 pi. Now just like we cut 90 in half to get 45, if I cut pi over 2 in half to get um, the radian for 45, that's going to be pi over 4. So this is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and then finally 8 pi over 4. 30 degrees is equivalent to pi over 6 in radians, if you were to convert it. So every 30 degrees is an increment of pi over 6. So I have 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 3, 3 pi over 6, which reduces, 4 pi over 6, which reduces to 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, which reduces, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, which reduces, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, which reduces, and finally 11 pi over 6. So if you notice, I just like to count around the unit circle. I find that to be the easiest way to deal with the radians. Um, from here, we need to figure out our ordered pairs. Well, we know the radius of a unit circle is one unit. That's why it's called a unit circle. So this ordered pair is going to be 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and then finally uh, 0, negative 1. All of your other angle measurements come from your special right triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and do the 30 degrees first. Um, so your radius for your unit circle is one unit, which means this hypotenuse for the triangle has to be one unit. Well, the one that I have set up over here is two units, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. That way I can get it so that my radius 
is one unit. Okay, so if I were to take this triangle and actually lay it on top of here, okay, that's going to give me the same triangle, which means my horizontal distance is my x coordinate for my ordered pair. So this distance is root 3 over 2. Vertical distance is 1 half because we're just going off of this triangle. For the 45 degrees, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm taking my 45, 45, 90 triangle, and I'm going to put it right in here. Now, we need your radius, the hypotenuse, to be one unit because it's a unit circle. So I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by root 2. That way, this radius can be 1. Well, we can't have radicals in the denominator, so that's equivalent to root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2, so that means my horizontal distance is root 2 over 2. Vertical distance is also root 2 over 2. And then for my 60 degrees, that's very similar to, it's the same thing as your 30, 60, 90, just rotated. But if you do want to go off of this triangle, I'm dividing everything by 2 to get my hypotenuse is 1, so my horizontal distance is 1 half, and my vertical distance is root 3 over 2. Now, if you have the first quadrant done, the rest of the quadrants for the ordered pairs are easy to figure out because you're just taking these points and reflecting them over. You just have to pay attention to the signs. So in the first quadrant, um, both coordinates are positive. Second quadrant, x is negative, y is positive. Third quadrant, they're both negative. And then fourth quadrant, I don't know why I put a negative one there. And then fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. So I'm going to go ahead and take this point, go straight over, and then I'm going to have negative one half and radical three over two. Take this point, reflect, that gives me negative root two over two and root two over two. Taking this point, going straight across, that gives me negative root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, reflect into each of the other quadrants. So that gives me negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half, negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, negative 1 half, and negative root 3 over 2. Going straight across gives me 1 half because your x is positive, y is negative, negative root 3 over 2. I have a negative one there. I don't know why I keep doing that. There we go. Um, radical 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. And then finally, root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. And voila, we have all of our angle measurements and radians, all in degrees, and all of the ordered pairs. Now what we can use the unit circle for is to find exact values of trig functions, which is what we're going to do in the next couple of examples. Um, so the definition of sine and cosine, if you are on the unit circle, um, sine corresponds to your y coordinates and cosine is going to correspond to your x coordinate as long as you're on the unit circle. And the reason why that is, is if I draw in here, here's my x, there's my y. Your radius on the unit circle is one unit. So if I have my cosine, that's my adjacent over the hypotenuse, so x over 1, which is just x. Sine is going to be y over 1, which is just y. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, which we don't have to do for this example, but I'm going to go ahead and make a note. Tangent is going to be y over x. So as long as the point is on the unit circle, so those are key words, on the unit circle, you can figure out sine and cosine right away. Cosine of theta is going to be your x-coordinate. Sine of theta is going to be your y-coordinate. There you go. Same thing for letter B. Cosine of theta is your x-coordinate. Sine of theta is your y-coordinate. And same thing over here. Cosine of theta is your x. Sine of theta is your y. 
Now, the difference between A, B, and C versus D and E is that I do not give you the point, but I do tell you that the point is on the terminal side of 45 degrees. So we can go back and look at our unit circle, go to 45 degrees, your ordered pair is root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So that means cosine of theta, so cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2, and sine of theta is going to be root 2 over 2. And then we have p on the terminal side of uh, 4 pi over 3, so I'm going to go to 4 pi over 3 on the unit circle. My ordered pair is negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. So that means cosine of theta is negative 1 half, and sine of theta is negative root 3 over 2. For the next example, we're going to look at all trig functions, not just cosine and sine. So we have our unit circle over here, which is filled in for us nicely. I want to find sine of 135. Well, sine matches up with our, X, or not, our y coordinate, not the x coordinate. Sine is your y coordinate. So I'm going to 135 degrees on my unit circle. Y coordinate is root 2 over 2, so sine is going to be root 2 over 2. 11 pi over 6 is over here on your unit circle. Cosine matches up with your x. So cosine of 11 pi over 6 is going to be root 3 over 2. Tangent is y over x. So tangent looks at both of your ordered pairs. So I'm looking at 225. I'm taking my y coordinate, which is negative root 2 over 2, and I'm dividing it by my x coordinate, which is also negative root 2 over 2. And that's going to equal positive 1. Secant, the reciprocal function, I would recommend looking for the other function. So secant matches up with cosine. So I want to find cosine of 4 pi over 3 first. Cosine is my x, so 4 pi over 3 is over here. x coordinates negative 1 half. So if cosine is negative 1 half, that means secant is negative 2 because they're reciprocals of each other. Cotangent matches up with tangent, so I'm going to go ahead and look for tangent of 3 pi over 2 first. So 3 pi over 2 is over here. My tangent is my y coordinate divided by my x coordinate. So I have negative 1 divided by 0, which is undefined, since you can't, you can't divide by 0. So if tangent's undefined, that means cotangent, its reciprocal function, is going to be 0. 690 degrees is not on the unit circle, as you can see, um, but what we can do is we can find a positive coterminal angle for 690 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and take 690 minus the full rotation, and that's going to give me 330 degrees, which is on the unit circle, so that works out nicely. So cosine of 330 is going to be uh, rad 3 over 2. Negative 3 pi over 4, not on the unit circle, um, but what I can do is I can add a full rotation to get an angle measurement on the unit circle. So negative 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi is going to be 5 pi over 4. So now I want to find sine of 5 pi over 4. Going to 5 pi over 4, y coordinates, because sine is your y coordinate, is going to be negative root 2 over 2. And then 480 is not on the unit circle, but what I can do is I can find tangent of 120 degrees, because 120 is a positive coterminal angle to uh, 480 degrees. Now, tangent is my y-coordinate divided by my x-coordinate. So my y-coordinate is root 3 over 2. My x-coordinate is negative 1 half. Now, when you're dividing fractions like this, so this doesn't reduce nicely like uh, tangent of 225 did. You're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this bottom one over. 2's cancel. 
So that's going to give me negative 1 times root 3, which is negative root 3. So tangent of 480 degrees is going to be negative root 3. All right, that's it for the unit circle.